And now, What's My Line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, the charming young man who is soon going to start his own comedy show on another network, Mr. Steve Allen. And on my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Steve. And on my left, a gentleman whose column in this week magazine every Sunday reaches about 11 million people. I've counted them. Mr. Bennett, sir. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right, Spike, next to a beautiful ad for Stop That today. That's you true. <laughs> on my left is our great news analyst, moderator, and the man that a horde of handsome convening shriners were mobbing for autographs outside before, Mr. John Daly. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we're going to have some people who have been nice enough to become our guests and bring with them some interesting occupations, which we trust will give the panel some trouble so that our guests will carry away the prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program. But now to get things underway, it's time for our experts to meet our first challenger, as they probably would like to do. And so would you please sign in, ma'am? Lila? Bull? Grin, right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. How do you Lila. do, Mrs.? Lila. Lila. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lila Belgrin. How are you? Fine, thank you. Mr. Would you be good enough to tell us where you're from? I'm from Los Angeles, California. Oh, well, you have come a long way to see us, and, uh, got a little short journey that you still have to make. Would you be good enough to walk down in front of the panel, please, and meet them? Would you stop and shake your hands, Mrs. Baldwin? Yeah. Nice to see you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. Bulgren, will you come over here, please, and sit down next to me? And as you might know, on the basis of this brief chance the panel has had to get to know you, we give them at this point one free guess as to what your line may be. And we always begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she plays a large, unlikely instrument, such as a bass fiddle in a jazz orchestra. Mr. Allen. I think she's a model. Miss Francis. I think she makes the tassels for the sh uh, Shriners' fez. <laughs> Sir. I think she's a cashier in the new Statler Hotel out in Los Angeles. No, I'm afraid nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have another look at Mrs. Lena Bulgren from California, and at the same time, we'll tell them what we're like. <laughs> However, the uh, panel has to dig. Mrs. Bulgren, I think the rules probably are familiar to you. Every time you get a no answer from the panel, it costs the panel $5. We keep a record of all that up here. Ten of these no's, and you have won the game. All right, Mrs. Bulgren is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with um, Bennett, sir. Mrs. Bulgren, is there some product involved in what you do? No. Well, that's one dot and nine to go. Miss Kilgallen. Then you deal in services, Miss Bulgren. Yes. Do you work for a profit-making organization? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Do you work for any branch of the government, then? Yes. Would that be the national government? Yes. What city are you from? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. I'm from Los Angeles. It's a hunger, California, really, but I work in Los Angeles. I'll get in touch with you. <laughs> uh, you work for the federal government in Los Angeles. Do you work indoors? Yes. Do people come to you to avail themselves of your services? Sometimes. Do you ever reach them through the mail? Occasionally. What mail did you have in mind? <laughs> 
Do you have anything to do... Could you possibly, by a negative decision of some kind, make people unhappy, or do you have that authority? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Could you affect people's pocketbooks? Uh, I'll have a conference if you don't mind. <laughs> Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I gather then that it's not the tax department or anything of that sort. Do you have anything to do with housing by any chance? Sometimes. It's funny, I can't get a room anywhere. <laughs> uh, do you work for something like the Federal Housing Authority or, I mean, in that area? Big area, isn't it? Yeah. Three down and seven to go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do something uh, in your work that has to do with paper and pencil at all? Say, that's a good one. <laughs> you ever use the paper Everyone. and pencil? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. Do you ever use a typewriter in your work? Occasionally. Do you work for uh, a specific person? Well, I mean, apart from Uncle Sam. Is that conference necessary, John? <laughs> you know he knows the answer it's to that like without that. asking. He's probably saying, where's the hunger? <laughs> <laughs> we have had a consultation. I noticed that. Fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> and we have decided that you might well say yes. I mean, to the degree that we all have an area of responsibility at the pinnacle of which there may be an individual, uh -huh. we may well say of uh, Mrs. Bogren that she, too, has an individual person to whom she is responsible. I would Thank say you, that. John. You would say that, yes. too. From what John has said, I think probably he will be the person you're going to be working for. <laughs> Do you wear any kind of a uniform or cover in your job? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Bogren, does your work bring you into any kind of contact, physical or by mail, with any members of the armed forces. <laughs> no more conferences now, John. <laughs> <laughs> We're working up to one. <laughs> occasionally. Only occasionally. Uh, you have nothing then to do with the post office department. I wouldn't say that, no. Yes, you have nothing to do with the post Yes, I <laughs> uh, Do you have anything whatever to do with people who work in the shipyards or somewhere along the harbor of Los Angeles? She likes it. Every question, I said. It. <laughs> Could be. Do you need any special training for the job that you have? Yes. Uh, do you have to take some kind of a special course for the job that you have? Yes. Would you have to be a college graduate for the job that you have? Mm, not necessarily. No, wait a minute. Gotta have a conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You would have to. Yeah. Uh, you said you didn't wear any special uniform for That's the job. That's right. That was a different. Have you got any title, such as doctor or uh, or uh, some kind of an office mm -hmm. that you have a title for? <laughs> Mrs. Buggins said, yeah, Indian chief. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, a doctor of... No, or would you... Would, would, uh, when no, people no. address you, they wouldn't have any special time. No, they wouldn't. No, they'd just say Mrs. Buggins. That's five down and five to go. Miss Kilgallen, I'm going would, to give you one minute more for would this. Would you consider yours an executive job? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Hmm? Hmm? No, I, I this isn't counting in my minute. I'd rather say no. <laughs> I don't think so, Dorothy. We, we may have a battle about this later. Six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, don't you think we're stupid? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Let me. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, do you work more with perhaps people who are uh, on the farm than in the city? Oh, no. Seven down and three to go. 30 do you, seconds. Do Mr. you do any kind of investigation? Is that in your job at all? Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> he's investigated Mr. Daly. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Give him 30 like days. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes, in some capacity. Yes. Uh, would you have anything to do with law enforcement in any way? 
Another conference. I shouldn't ask these questions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, would you be considered uh, a liaison type person? Mr. A liaison. Do you work between the government and uh, some other? Uh, the lawbreaker. Well, then the lawbreaker. I would say no because that's not the essential part of my work. I All right, Mrs. Bulgren, for you. Anything <laughs> <laughs> to do with matrimony at all? Now, I'm going to flip the towel because time has gone up. Mrs. Bulgren wins the full, wins the full prize by default. Actually, this is a, a tough one, but at the same time, if you've gotten on the right clues, I think you might have had it. Mrs. Bulgren is the federal prosecuting attorney out in her part of the world. And that's world. not an executive position? No, I don't think so. Not as we use it in general and normal life. She is serving a profession and is not to be called an executive. You wouldn't call a doctor an executive, for instance. Therefore, I think by the same yardstick, you wouldn't call a lawyer an executive. Executive is administrator. Yeah, so the executive is an administrator, is not a performer of a function in a profession. I won that one, didn't I? <laughs> well, I hope. <laughs> Nice to have you with us. Glad you won the whole prize. Thanks for being our guest and what's my life. All right, panel, we've got uh, another challenger for you. Would you please sign in, sir? John, while you're signing in, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Could I ask you if a prosecuting attorney does not have anything to do with lawbreakers? Actually, I think no. probably, maybe, yes. <laughs> well, you take it up <laughs> Give me the $5. <laughs> How are you, nice. Mr. Pepper? Yeah. Where are you from, sir? Not <laughs> Mr. Pepper is from Bloomfield, New Jersey. Panel, he's practically a neighbor of ours, so be kind to him. Would you walk <laughs> down in front of the panel, please? Hello, Mr. Pepper. Hello, Mr. Pepper. Hello, Mr. Pepper. Right. That's my friend Dorothy Kilgallen. Are those three F's in your name, Mr. Pepper? <laughs> How wonderful. All right, Mr. Pepper, will you bring the three F's in your name and yourself right over here and sit them down next to me? And as I think you know, at this point, we always have one free guess by the panel and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Oh, I don't know. I think he does something very jolly, like uh, making little cars for the Tunnel of Love. Mr. Uh, <laughs> I think he works for the draft board and decides who's a 3F. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. Well, I think in the first place, Mr. Pepper's first name should be Hudson. I'm sure you can ask that. <laughs> but I think that he's a historian. Mr. Sir. I think he's an executive of the International Pfeiffer Company. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Pfeiffer. At the same time, we'll tell them <laughs> what his line is. <laughs> All right. Panel's got to dig, Mr. Pepper. I think you know the rules. No answer. Five dollars. We keep the record up here. Ten no's. You have won the game. All right, Mr. Pepper is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with um, Steve Allen. Mr. Pfeffer, do you deal with a product of any kind? Yes. Uh, to ask a very common question around here, is it the kind of a thing that I might come into contact with? Uh, at yes. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps would that make me happy? Yes. <laughs> you seem to be on the wrong track. Uh, <laughs> could this be something that a woman might use? Yes. Uh, is it something she could get into her purse? She could carry in her purse? Yes. Is it something that might ever come in contact with any part of a woman's face? Yes. Um, might it make her more uh, attractive? Uh, I, no, no, I don't think so. One down to nine to go, Miss Francis. When it comes in contact with the woman's face, could it possibly go in the woman's mouth? Yes. <laughs> Is that its uh, purpose, your product, to be eaten or, or drunk? Yes. <laughs> uh, is it something to be eaten? Mm, I would say that that is probably the verb to use, yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, do you ever uh, uh, chew on it for any length of time? No. No, that you wouldn't do with this. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. But, Mr. Faffel, would you be apt to keep this in your mouth for some time before uh, swallowing it? No. Three you down wouldn't. and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, does this mysterious thing have any nutrient quality? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Does it have quite a distinctive taste? It's yours. You uh, tell him. <laughs> Not, no. Not, Not a distinctive thing. taste per se. Actually, I would say that one of the purposes of its construction would be that it should not have a distinctive taste. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Uh, is it something other than a food? Yes. 
Is it something that might be purchased in a drugstore? Yes. Uh, it's for medicinal purposes. For what? <laughs> uh, it comes under the heading of something that... Uh, no, I won't say that. I'll take that back. Uh, is it something that you swallow? Yes. Uh, and you say it has no nutrient value whatsoever? No. Uh, is it helpful in any way? Yes. Uh, is it uh, liquid? No. Uh, by that I mean, is it an oily base of some kind? Boy, that was a real nice try. Six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> How this, hard uh, is the oil that you think of? Quite hard. <laughs> quite hard, yeah. Mr. Pfeffer, might this, taking of this thing, uh, do away with uh, an unpleasant breath or something of that sort? No. Seven no. down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Might it do away with some uh, specific ailment? Yes. Uh, such as um, a headache or fever or something that might ail you? It is taken for the specific purpose of relieving a condition which is considered inimical to the person who has it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you take this uh, with a glass of water, perhaps? Yes. Is it in pill or tablet or capsule form? It is. Uh, does it come in a bottle, jar, or box? You just roll it home, darling. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, is it, is it taken um, for, um, well, say, a hangover? No. I don't think this is described as a hangover. No, that's eight down and two to go. Mr. Allen, what is it? Is it an... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me, Bob. I just came in here because it was warm. <laughs> is this thing an out-and-out -out medicine? Yes. Well, out with it, then. <laughs> uh, is it a... Uh, uh, what yes. do they call it? Uh, does it have a, a name, you know, like uh, uh, cough medicine has a name like... It has a name. REM, or the trade name. No, we're not thinking of a trade. Actually, it has a specific name which has to do with what it is that it is taken to alleviate. Does it alleviate dizziness? Yes. In a way, yes. Does it alleviate uh, snake bite? <laughs> <laughs> no snake bite. Nine out of one to go, Miss Francis. Is it uh, on the order of the aspirin? By that, I mean, would it relieve a headache if you took it? It might. <laughs> Why yes, are you looking at me like that? Well, it, it... It's on the order of it, but we don't say that about well, your Well, it is product. not an aspirin. No, 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 I knew, I just An meant... aspirin does not do what this would do. Oh, well, this is something unusual. B, C. Uh, <laughs> is it, does it have a vitamin in it? No. That makes it 10 down oh, and no I'm more to go. Right. This is a lovely one. Mr. Pepper makes... Seasick oh. pill. Oh, Whoa! Just it. Just it. Mr. Pepper, you have won the full prize. We hope you had fun. It was nice to have you as a guest of What's My Line. Good night, sir. Grand to see you. And now, we'll meet our mystery guest in just a moment. Special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel would know our guest on site and... So, as usual, we've provided them with blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. They are. Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we dispense with all the usual preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Arlene Francis. Are you associated with the entertainment business? Pardon, I didn't hear you. I... Hmm? Are you associated with the entertainment business? Oh, yes. I am considered uh, in the entertainment industry. Oh, you are? <laughs> uh, would you consider yourself an actor? I have been mistaken for an actor, yes. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a leading man? A leading man? Yes. Well, it has so happened that there have been performances where the entire thing has revolved around me, yes. It has? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, are you... Uh, have you ever appeared in pictures? I have appeared in pictures, yes. You're have right. you been on stage? I have had the pleasure of playing on the stage also. 
Uh, do you always talk that way? Because <laughs> I don't think you could project to New Jersey. <laughs> Play for New York. Keep after him, Arlene. I think it's Ollie the Dragon. <laughs> Are you considered a character actor? Well, I want you to know this is an extreme compliment because I've waited for years for someone to acknowledge my... She did, your she character? She say you were. She asked you if you were. <laughs> I think I'd have to give you a no on that. That's one down right. and nine to go. Is it my turn now? <laughs> yes, it's your turn, Mr. Seth. Uh, have you ever done anything on the stage besides acting? Oh, yes, Mr. Surf, I have. Have you ever directed any plays? I've never directed a play. Two down and eight to go, Miss Gilgallan. When you say that you've done something on the stage besides acting, do you mean that you may have done something in a show connected with music? Something in a show connected with music? You're mm -hmm. right, yes. Something connected with music. Uh, do you either sing or dance? I didn't hear you. Do you either sing or dance? I neither sing nor dance. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Do you, I mean, do you play a music <laughs> instrument? I didn't hear you, Mr. Allen. I'm not doing so well with you either. <laughs> you said, uh, do you play a musical instrument professionally? Well, yes, I play a musical instrument, too. You sound like you've been playing it all day. <laughs> Uh, is it a wind instrument? Is it a wing? A wind instrument? A wind instrument. Oh, no, Mr. Allen. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Now, look here. Uh, <laughs> you tell her, do you, uh, do you use your hands with this instrument? Oh, I mean, yes. are your hands the primary means yes, of Francis. locomotion between you and the instrument? Oh, yes, Miss Is Francis. the instrument too heavy to be carried around the house on your back? Well, I'm afraid it is just a little heavy Is it a piano? A what? A piano. A piano? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Francis. That's what I thought you said, and I know you're not Oscar Levant, are you? Oh, no. No. You're a different type fellow. I bet you've played at Carnegie Hall, even. I have had occasion to play at Carnegie Hall, Miss And Francis. I'll bet that uh, it isn't King, and it isn't Prince, and it isn't Earl, but it's Duke something. Duke Ellington. <laughs> Duke Ellington. And actually... You know, I was just wondering whether Dorothy was going to get I, I know thought she'd get Dorothy is a great lover of Duke's music and goes to the band box here in New York where Duke has been playing. And I thought Dorothy might get it with that soft voice. I'm embarrassed. He fooled yeah. me. Well, Duke, you embarrassed him. I love you for it. Oh, thank you very, very much. much. I didn't get again. very far, though. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and so we have uh, barely two minutes to go, panel, and we'll see what you can do very quickly with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir? Joseph Wagner. How are you, Mr. Wagner? Weehawken, New Jersey. Mr. Wagner is from Weehawken, New Jersey. I'm going to bring him over here with me, because we haven't time to walk down. Mr. Wagner, will you come over here? Sit down with me, and we're going to dispense with the wild guest panel. Uh, you will just have to take a quick look at him and uh, just try to figure out what he is without saying what he is. Meanwhile, we will let our viewers at home have a quick look at Mr. Wagner and tell them at the same time what his occupation is. But you're going to have to work. All right, you're going to have only about a minute to do it. Mr. Wagner is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. One minute to go. Uh, Mr. Wagner, do you work for a profit-making organization? Oh, definitely. Is your job something other than a desk job? Yes. Does it ever take you out of doors? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Is there a product connected with your work? Yes. Can it be found in the home? Yes. Is it more apt to be found in one particular part of the home than another? Yes. In a two-story building, would it be upstairs? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would it be found uh, in the kitchen? Yes. 
Uh, is it any kind of an appliance that is used in the kitchen? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Wagner, is it used for any purpose of cleaning? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it I used for any know. purpose of eating? No. Not actually for eating, and our time is up, so oh. Mr. Wagner wins by default. I think you'd have gotten this when you were getting Bubble close. Gum. Mr. Wagner <laughs> is a tea bag inspector. <laughs> you were getting a tea bag. <laughs> Thanks very much. Oh, we would have gotten that one. Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's speak at this same time. Our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you spot his line? Well, for answers to these and a good many other questions, many we hope and are surely trusting will be very amusing. Be sure and tune us again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. And once again, stop at, invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Until we see you again, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, boys, and good night, Arlene. Good night, boys, and good night, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John, just occurred to me, your feathers are so familiar, I bet you're a shrine of yourself. Good night. <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.